Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick. Welcome to the Lightroom Blog channel. Bonus video today. On the channel we do Lightroom and we do photography, so if that interests you, please do subscribe to the channel. So today we're going to talk about the new features in Lightroom 7.5. Hi folks, Lightroom 7.5 is just out. It's got a bunch of new features. Uh, we're just gonna dive straight into them. Uh, the first one is a biggie, is for book. So let's dive in and take a look at book for a start. So here we are in the book module. The first thing I'm gonna talk about before I dive in to show you some of the new actual layout features is just talk about the new book types you've got. So as well as the blurb photo book, you now have the magazine and the trade book. Um, so the magazine is obviously just for creating little magazines and the trade books for creating cheaper books like cookbooks or storybooks things like that stuff that aren't dedicated photo books but are like books that have photo in them all right so i'm just run, running off a magazine and it's basically an a4 or you know so if we if we, if we think about the size uh, magazine sizes here so we can see that it's 8.5 by 11 so standard kind of magazine size but you can do a lot more stuff with layouts. Now, obviously book has been template based and that you basically go in and you deal with your template and there's not a whole lot you can do. So you would select a template here and that would be the look that you get. Not so anymore. Now you've got a lot more options in terms of that. So the first thing you can do is you can resize the actual image and you can also drag the image around so you can have it in different places. So you're a little bit less limited. Uh, there's also a padding option as well. So that pads inside the cell area. So this is the padding. And once that's kind of visible, you can then pad automatically from the guides themselves and move it about wherever you want it to be. Now, the thing about this is once you've got padding on, the photo border is now outside the padding just so that you're aware of that. Okay, so now I'm going to add another cell here. So I just right click here and go add cell. Add photo. All right, so I've got a photo cell here, so I'm just going to grab another image. And and we'll go for the other headshot. So now I have a second image in here. So let's say I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. But you can also move these around. So I can now right click here and go send to the back. So I can send to the back or send it backwards. Same with this one. So I can send it backwards one. Or let's say I can here, I can come down here and I can bring this to the front or bring it forward. So you can have different layers levels on it. And send to back. So obviously that works a little bit better from a view here. So now by dragging the cell, I can move it around and create a little bit of a fit in the shape here. So we can see that we have a lot more options here for those templates. So that's some of the basic kind of layout additions. So that means that you've got far more options in terms of laying out and getting a lot more options from the books themselves, which I think is fantastic. And the fact that you've got the magazine style, so you've got A4 as an option for exporting PDFs as A4 as well because you can do a print to PDF, so export book to PDF from there. So just in terms of the other books themselves as well, there are some additions. Now, when I click here back to blurb photo book, it's gonna go and it's gonna do a, give me a change format and relayout. So it's gonna change the format and relayout, so it's gonna lose a bunch of the stuff we've done there. That's just how it is. But inside here, we've got other options as well. And um, so we can now have lay flat books. So come in here and go standard lay flat in the paper type, change paper type. And that automatically changes the hardcover image wrap which in it. But the idea with this is that when you do this, if you create a double page spread, it then will completely lay flat. So there's gonna be no seam in the middle basically, so where stuff is missing, which is great. And it does that perfectly as well. So I have an image that was actually shot sideways. That's actually been moved here, rotated the wrong way. So I just, um, Jump back out to grid for a second. And I'm gonna rotate that the way I shot it. So I'm gonna jump back to book. And for the template here, I'm just gonna select one of the double page spreads. So grab a two page spread here. And I'm just gonna drag this image and drop it on. So now that'll give us kind of the lay flat. So when we actually go and see lay flat, so this will lay completely flat and the whole image will be perfectly visible with no seam in the middle basically. So that's absolutely fantastic. The other thing that's great as well is that if you do send book to blurb here, you now have the option to pause it and resume it. So if you get that issue whereby it looks like it's seized up, at least you can pause for a little bit. 
and then resume to try it again later on just in case there's a lot of congestion or stuff like that because sometimes it has failed in the past it just gives you an opportunity to pause it and, and come back and try again after so now we're going to jump to uh, back to g4 grid for a second because what i'm going to do is i'm going to just command click on the top here and get rid of everything here for a second and i'm going to open up public services and come down here to facebook and if i jump here into shoots which is an old shoot and um, we'll see that i have access to the actual shoots themselves uh, on august 1st facebook's api and instagram's closed and you weren't even able to look at the images but now what you can do is you can actually see what images you have previously uploaded online okay so these are just showing you images that you have up on facebook that are in the catalog already so you can't do any changes you can't add photos to facebook or anything like that but at least it lets you know what files are already online and you can go to them from here as well but there's no access you know as such it's just literally a read-only kind of leftover version of it for you so that you don't you haven't lost the information about what's up there already so as well as that folks you can do stuff with presets as well so let's have a look at what you can do about presets now it'll just be a very quick showing what you can do rather than doing a full import if i go file i can now go import develop uh, pro presets and profiles i'm not in the right place for that if I i'm just going to click into develop i can probably do it from library directly but not in public services and um, so go file import develop presets and profiles and what you do is it'll just let you go and select the file to import now part of this is that it lets you import a zip file so you're able to have more than one preset or profile come in at the same time so it's presets and profiles so it, like it's, it's you know it's not being very very fussy it's going to let you just bring them in and they go into the raw settings folder uh, which is a new place where the presets are so it does ignore store presets with catalog just so you know that and um, because that would have been linking to the old location so if we actually go in and have a look at develop itself we can see here that things are now split off so we have these kind of sections so the different ones are kind of split into their own sections now as well so when you import a set they will be able to go into their own section so there are a couple of other things HEIF is now supported on Windows which is great so if you're using an iPhone or something like that you're able to get that information across and see stuff like that on Windows and have them imported and there was an issue with the map module where it was showing that Lightroom was going to be discontinued or that map would be discontinued in Lightroom but no that's not the case 7.5 fixes that so that's done folks if you liked the video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already uh, obviously we do bonus videos and stuff like that if you're interested in Lightroom photography that's what we cover here and of course, hit the notification bell to get notified if you are subscribed. And folks, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.